a long walk to water by Linda Sue Park, based on a true story. Chapter 6, Southern Sudan, 2008. In his family had been coming to the lake camp for generations. Naya herself had been there every year since she was born. One thing that she liked about the camp was that even though she had to dig in the clay and wait for water, that she did not have to make too long of trips. She did, she did not have to make too long trips to the pond every day. But this year she realized that for the first time that her mother hated the camp. They had no house and they had to sleep in a makeshift shelter. They had not bring they could not bring most of their things. So they had to make do with whatever they had. And for much of each day they had to go dig for water. But worst was uh, but the worst was that the look on her mother's face and Naya's father and her older brother, Depp, went off to hunt deer. Her mother was afraid, afraid that the men from the family would run into Duncan tribesmen somewhere and they would have a fight and get injured or worse. They had been lucky all these years. No one from Naya's family had been hurt or killed by Dunka, but she knew that the families in the village who had lost loved ones this way. And I could see the questions in her mother's face every morning. Would be lucky again, or was it their turn to lose someone? Sylvia's mouth was closed open again as he was a fish. She tried to speak, but no, one, but no sound came from his throat. He tried to move, but his feet seemed to struck the ground. Sylvia the main said it hurried towards him when the man was only a few steps away. Sylvia suddenly found a voice. Uncle, she cried and ran to the man's arms. Uncle Jules and the younger brothers of the Sylvia's father. Sylvia had seen him the last two years. He became uncle that had an army. Uncle must know about the war and the fighting. Maybe he would know where the family is. But these are the hopes that dashed as soon as the uncle spoke. Are you alone? Where's your family? He asked. So he hardly knew where to begin his answer. It seemed like this year since he had run away from school into the bush, but he told his uncle everything at the best he could. As Silva spoke, uncle nodded or shook his head. His face became very solemn, and when Silva told him that he had not seen nor heard a single word of his family in all that time. Sylvia's voice trailed off and lowered his head. He was glad to see the uncle again, but it looked like as if he might not be able to help either. Uncle was quiet for a moment. Then he patted Sylvia's shoulder. Ah, nephew, he said in a cheerful voice. We are together now, so I will look after you. It turned out that uncle had to join the group three days earlier, but since there were more than 30 people traveling together, that they had not found each other until now. As they began walking, Silva saw that the uncle had a gun, a rifle that he carried on the strap over his shoulder. Silva already could tell that because of the army experience and because he had a gun, uncle had seen the group of this kind of leader. Yes, when I left the army, they left my, kept my rifle, Uncle said, so I'm going to shoot as fine meal as soon as we come across anything worth eating. Uncle was true to his word that every day he shot a young antelope and a kind of called a topi. Silva could hardly wait until it could be skinned and butchered and roasted as smoked, smoky, meaty aroma filled the air. He had to keep swallowing. Silva had flooded his mouth. Flooded his mouth. Uncle laughed as he watched Silva gobble down his first piece of meat. Silva, you have teeth. You are supposed to use them when you eat. Silva could do in reply. He was too busy stuffing another chunk of delicious charred meat into his mouth. Even though the tuppy was a small one, there was more than enough meat to go around for everyone in the group. But it did not take long for Selva to regret that his haste eating. After so many weeks of near starvation, his stomach rebelled mightily. 
He spent most of the night vomiting. Salvo did not, was not alone. <clears throat> Whenever his heaving stomach woke him, he would hurry to the edge of the camp to vomit and find others doing the same. At one point, Selva found himself on a line of half a dozen people, all in identical poses, bent over a hole in their stomachs, and waiting for the next wave of nausea. It might have been funny if he had felt so miserable. The group continued to walk through the land of Atoll. Every day, they saw lions, usually resting at the shade of a small tree. Once in the distance, they saw a lion chasing a topi. Topi escaped, but along the paths, Sylvia saw the bones of prey that had not been there for so fortunate. Selva and Marl still walked together, staying close to their uncle. Sometimes the uncle would walk with the other men and serious, talk seriously about the journey. At those times, Selva and Marl would drop back respectfully, but Selva always tried to keep up uncle in sight, and they slept near the uncle at night. One day the group began walking in the late afternoon with hopes of reaching the water hole before settling down for the night, but there was no water anywhere through the searches for a while. They kept walking into the night, through the night, for ten hours they walked. By the dawn everyone was exhausted. Uncle and the other leaders finally decided that the group had rest. Sylvia took two steps off the path and felt asleep almost before he lay down. He did not wake until the, he felt Uncle's hand shake his shoulder. As he opened his eyes, he heard wailing. Someone is crying. Selva is blanked away the sleeplessness and looked at Uncle's. His face was very solemn. I'm sorry, Selva. Uncle said quietly, your friend, Marl. Sylvia looked around. He should be somewhere nearby. I don't remember if he slept near me. I was so tired. Perhaps he was gone to find something to eat. Uncle stoked, stroked Sylvia's head as if he was a baby. I'm sorry, he said again. The cold fist seemed to grip Sylvia's heart. In a chapter six, The Long Walk to Water, Linda Sue Park, based on a true story.